Brother Joseph. Yes. Hey, this is editor Bill Hernandez with RockBandReviews.com in Fort Lauderdale. How are you today? Hey, Bill. I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be speaking with you today and, and even more excited that in over 30 years of uh, interviewing bands and uh, reviewing concerts, this will be my actual first time uh, seeing Toto in a couple of weeks here. Oh, great. Yeah, very, very excited. Um, and I mean, my God, 40 years, man. Did you ever think when you got in this business that you would still be doing this uh, with Toto? I mean, for 40 years. No, it's, it's, listen, it's crazy. It's just, I'm just glad to be still standing. You know, it's, <laughs> um, I mean, that's really what, it, what it's all about. But, um, you know, listen, this, it's the, the, the guys to be, uh, to be amazed with are the guys who are still, still here from that first day. I mean, I, I joined a little bit later. Yeah. I've known these guys all my life. I knew them, you know, been friends with them and, and family with them since before there was a, even a to ever was a, a Toto. But uh, it is amazing. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think yesterday, actually, 40 years ago, yesterday was the day the first album was released. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it is an amazing thing, uh, you know. David Page, especially, who's who, um, yeah. you know, he and Jeff Picaro, who, who started this this whole thing forty years ago with the with these amazing songs. I mean, look at Africa; the two of them wrote, and and uh, what's become of that with everybody who's covered that thing. So I, I uh, tell you what, you can't turn on the TV, I don't think anymore, and not hear that song in a movie, in a commercial. Uh, it, it's just uh, and the remake that was recently done as well. Um, I can't think well, of the. You, yeah, go ahead. You, you certainly can't boot your computer up without hearing it. I mean, it's it is uh, yeah. it is kind of a cool thing. And uh, listen, it's terrific. It's like it's for for the band. It's a gift. Oh, it absolutely. Just, it, it keeps uh, it keeps changing the demographic of the audience for the tours and just makes it younger and younger as we go. Now, we're going to be seeing you um, October 28th, which is a Sunday. It's going to be at the Pompano Beach Amphitheater, which is probably one of the best uh, venues here in South Florida with the beautiful weather we've been having and such. And um, what is the uh, – what is the – who are the members in the, the lineup on this tour? Well, you, of course you have Steve Lukather, the one – the man who was, who was at the very first rehearsal and is still – Standing and still playing his ass off and singing his ass off, of yeah. course. So he's you know standing front and center. Um, David Page is taking a break right now, and he is uh, just for his his health. He he got a little bit of a, a burnout kind of a thing happening in Europe at the beginning of the year, so he's taking a break just for the rest of this year. But we have this cat uh, uh, Xavier X who played with Prince taking his place, and he did the first month with us over in the western part of the United States in August, and he's amazing. So he's going to be playing the piano. Mm -hmm. Steve Picaro, who was uh, also standing uh, in the, you know, with those guys in the original band, the writer of uh, Human Nature and all those amazing uh, keyboard solos from Roseanne and everything. He's there, of course. Um, I'll, I'll be there, um, you know, screaming my head off. Uh, <laughs> You know, on drum, Shannon Forrest, we have uh, uh, Shem von Schreck playing bass and singing singing his butt off. Yeah. We have uh, Warren Ham back from the 80s playing sax and singing with us again. Nice, nice. We have Lenny Castro, who's, who's played, ca uh, played uh, percussion for the band since the very, very first album all the way through to the present. So he's, like almost, he's kind of more of an original member than anybody. Yeah. And uh, who am I forgetting? That's everybody. It's a it's a really impressive lineup, and it's actually a, a pretty large band. It's pretty, you know, it's 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 a standard Toto size. You know, it takes that that many guys to pull it off. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, you know, we're talking forty years and all of that. I mean, if you can look back to when you when you were a young boy, uh, can you remember when music first impacted your life, and you thought, you know what, this is this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Well, my, you know, my, in my case, it's, it was, you know, the first time I felt that I was conscious because, you know, my parents were musicians. Yes. So, so I didn't, you know, that was the impact of music was like the same thing as saying, do you remember the impact of English? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was, for me, that was sort of what that was. But for, in terms of the impact of kind of music that spoke to me more than anything, 
I would say that it was like it was the first time that I heard like you know instrumental piano music or instrumental guitar music, anything that was very uh, um, you know complicated. And then and then of course after that Beatles, of course you know as soon as I heard voices voices like Paul McCartney. And then later, Stevie Wonder and guys like that. I heard those kinds of singers and wanted to be that. Now, now, back then, you were obviously listening to the kind of these kind of bands. Uh, are there any bands or artists that that particularly stand out that may have helped shape your musical DNA? Well, yeah, for me, yes. Um, lots of lots of uh, of uh, Zeppelin. Yes, definitely a lot of uh, you know uh, prog bands. Yes, was a big one for me just sure. because of it. John and John Anderson and those kinds of harmonies, and yeah. structures, and that sound and stuff. So I, I was definitely in my DNA. Uh, a lot of just McCartney's uh, style of singing, just the just the way he uh, just the way he he uh, sang English is just sort of I don't know. It's how I learned how to sing English. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and in ter- and in terms of how to pull notes out here and there, and just sort of maybe try and be a better singer, uh, you know, quote unquote. I guess I've always thought of Stevie Wonder as being my favorite singer, singer. Ah, fantastic. And so, yeah, and so that combo of things, I guess, kind of best describes, I guess, what I'm where I am. Now, now your voice is an instrument, of course. Uh, what do you do, if anything, to maintain your vocals while you're on tour? Uh, sleep as much as possible. Mm. It's for for what for the kind of singing I'm doing, which is really shouting. Yeah. Um, um, my my vocal speaking voice is actually a little lower. My vocal range, I should say, is a little low for the high shouting that I'm doing. So. A lot of rest is is, is needed, and yeah. just and just and just a lot of water. Well, get get the right amount of exercise, but no no nonsense. That's the answer, really. Got gotcha. you. And and most of it has to do with my age. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't say that like if you're 25 years old and you want to go out and do shows and you know you can hang out a little, but you know don't go crazy. But for me at my age, I gotta get a lot of rest to be able mm-hmm. to get out there and scream. Now, do you need to particularly like save your voice right before a show? Let's say with uh, like meet and greets and stuff. Do you kind of keep the chatter to a minimum? Not really. You know, it depends. If you know, so it's only if I'm feeling under the weather. But yeah. other than that, not really. You just sort of behave normally and not try and speak loudly. But that's that. Not really. Now, a lot you of get... times when we when we when we go backstage or we meet with a band that we've interviewed with and such. Uh, a lot of times they'll be in a room by themselves, the singer or even backup singers, and they're doing warm ups and things like that. Do you warm up before you uh, you hit the stage? I I I sometimes do right before, but generally I'll do it a, a few hours before. Ah. Yeah. Does that not, basically not... stretch out the vocal cords and maybe allow them to relax again or something, or what does it's, that do? It's, I would I would just put it to you this way: it's the same thing is that if you were if you were going to run in a professional race yeah wouldn't you take at least a half an hour to just like stretch your limbs and stretch your muscles and you know really really get as limber as you could exactly and it's almost the same uh like playing guitar you know i pick it up every day for an hour but i start off with a few uh finger exercises basically to warm up before exactly i tackle any crazy shit so uh (laughs) exactly and so and so for me what i found is that a a few hours before is better uh, um, because I, I don't need to belabor it. Mm. And, but, and once I get the blood in there and get it going and stuff like that, I don't I don't need to just keep doing it or do it right before we go out on stage. Sure. It's bad because the show itself actually p- is paced pretty well. So mm. that's pretty that's pretty much my routine. Good, good. Do you have any uh, any openers on this tour? You know, I'm not even quite so sure yet. Um, there may be a few here and there, but. But it's my understanding we're continuing our just you know just us tour. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you got plenty of material to fill three or four hours worth, you know. So it's not like you, uh, like some bands have maybe one hit or two, and uh, you know they need that opening band to kind of fill up a time slot, you know, where they can come out and do maybe 
maybe an hour and 20 minutes, and then the opener can fill up that rest of that time. So the, I guess the concert goer feels that, hey, we got our two hours worth, you know? Well, uh, um, most of the time, or at least I should say in the last few years, we've come out in the United States in the, in the summer or late summer, you know, with another act, and each person does 90 minutes, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that, that way you get the, the, you know, the big hits at least, and maybe a couple of inside tracks, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's a lot of fun. We did a month already in August in the West, and then, you know, the Southwest, and, or the West, Western part of the United States, and Midwest, mm -hmm. um, doing just our, what we would normally do, call our European shows, which mm -hmm. is just us, an evening with Toto. Yes. For which is just our two two hour and ten minute show. Nice. Which is which is uh, which is what I'm hoping we're just going to con continue to do on this run right here, which is which is way more interesting. It's it's um it's just a it's it's a, just a deeper track show. Of course, you get all the big hits, but it's just it's very cool. It's got lots of cool stuff you're not going to expect. Good, good. Now, uh, you're driving down the highway, let's say. Turn on the radio, and Africa comes on. Rosanna, you know any Toto song? Do you immediately switch the station because you know you, you you're so involved with the band and you hear this music, or do you just sing along with it from beginning to end? Well, if if I happen to be in a car where it happens to be tuned to some station where Africa could happen to be possibly coming on, I would absolutely leave it on the phone. Hey, man. So normal, no, normally, you. I'm always tuned to news or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do you do you do you sing along on your parts and all of that, or you just, you just do it in your head? <laughs> I sing. Of course, I sing my parts, but but to, to not work as hard, I sing an octave lower. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So you know, you guys are doing this tour. Everything seems to be going great. What is next for you personally? And also with Toto in the future. Well, we have the we have the 40th uh, anniversary or 40 trips around the sun box set coming out, which also has a brand new album in it. It's ten new ten song album. Oh wow! So there's some new tunes in there, which means that we will be having a whole new set of music to be playing at some point, either next year. We're gonna, we have we still have to go to Australia and, and the and Asia with this whole tour. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there's still new music coming out with us. <clears throat> After that, we'll see what happens. We will want to see how Dave's doing and all of that. And in the meantime, I'm I'm like a, a few, four, three or four or five tunes into a solo album. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's it. Other than that, we'll just see what's going on. Now we'll, at we'll, um at these shows, uh, are you gonna have a, a merchandise booth? We do have a merch booth, and several of us have have. Uh, of trinkets that you can get there. Mm -hmm. um, will the uh, will the box set be available or not? I sure hope so. I mean, I you know they've been they've been you know it was supposed to come out in August. It, it wasn't there. It was supposed to be October. I, I I saw it physically with my own eyes last week. I'm hoping that it's ready and that it's coming. You know, and that they're going to have it. Um, we have all you know all our regular swag plus. Lenny has his album, and of course Steve Beccaro and, and uh, Luke's book. I think he's probably have more copies of his book. Mm, good, good. Well, we're going to be dropping a, a large dime at that merch table then. <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much, Joseph, for taking time to speak with me and uh, for RockBandReviews.com here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the guys on uh, Sunday, the 28th of October at the Pompano Beach Amphitheater. Great, man. Can't wait. All right. And if we can come back before or after and uh, say hello, that would be great. Awesome, man. All right. Wonderful. Looking forward to seeing you and safe travels to you and the guys on the road. Thanks, mate. Thanks for your time. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, buddy.